Okay. So basically sevens have lost contact with the sense of the big picture. And so they try to figure it out. Eights are the um, bullies of the Enneagram, the um, tough guys and girls, and they value very much being strong, not showing any of the vulnerable or soft human emotions. So being strong, being on top, uh, not being nothing happening to them that could be devastating and so on is what they really value. And um, they, they tend to be rather pragmatic and whatever they can experience through the five senses is what's real and the rest is basically bullshit, as they would say. Yeah, they're kind of typical big company bosses a lot of the time, aren't they? Yeah. Quite ruthless, very determined, very yes. focused, yes. but not very humanitarian. Right, exactly, yeah, yeah. I know, I know a few eights, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting, I did, just a very brief aside, I, I did this Enneagram workshop with you a few years ago in Germany, and one of the exercises that we did in this workshop was you divided this up into the various Enneagram types, so the number ones get together, number twos, etc., and the number eight corner was empty because there was no Enneagram type eight in that workshop, which for me has always uh, kind of defined what an eight, a lot of the eights are like. They're kind of very, I don't need this kind of stuff. Right, right. This is a lot of airy-fairy yeah. expletive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the interesting thing, I, I, uh, as you know, I, I lead a couple of groups here in the UK. Yes. And I've got quite a few eights in those groups. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe the British eights are more open to that than the uh, continental ones. I, I don't know ones. why. No. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. It, it's the same in the States. There are very few eights in spiritual circles, although yeah. there have been a number of eight teachers, Yeah. like Gurdjieff, for instance, Swami Muktananda. Right. Um, the infamous Madame Blavatsky, you know, who founded yeah. Yeah. Theosophy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we take people in the news at the moment, like... What would Sarah Palin be? Do you know what her Enneagram is? Oh God, Sarah Palin. Um, she, gee, I'm, I, I'm not really sure. She comes across a lot as a three, I would say. Uh, either a three or a one. She's, okay. she's very, she has a lot of that um, fundamentalist doing what she considers to be the right thing and wanting to off those who don't do the right thing, which is very one-ish. Right. So that's, that's a possibility, although she looks more like a three. Right. And McCain and Obama, how do you feel they, they'd stack up in well, category? Well, uh, I think Obama could be a three, Yeah. possibly. Um, he has the same kind of charisma that, that John F. Kennedy had, who was a great three. Right. You know, who really embodied the cultural uh, current at the time, the cultural idealism, and expressed it. So that's a possibility. McCain, um, I would say he's either a one or an eight. He has quite a okay. temper, apparently. Right, So yeah. that's a one or an eight, I would imagine. And what's our own Gordon Brown here, do you think? Do you know much about him? Um, he strikes me as being an eight, actually. Okay, yeah. 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 Uh, Tony Blair was way slicker, much smoother. I think he probably was a seven. That would make sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 and he had quite a famous relationship with George Bush, who I think is also a seven. Yes, yeah. So there was a similarity there. I think there was an affinity in terms of their personality yes. styles. Yes, yeah. And I also remember you saying at one point that countries can have Enneagram types as yeah, well, which yeah. I found very interesting. So what, what would, for instance, the US be and the UK be? Um, well, first of all, let me just say that mu much of my understanding of that comes from Claudio. So it's, okay. it's not something that I originated. I, okay. I, I, I like to really reference my sources. Okay. Um, well... America is, to me, a very uneasy blend of one and three. You all, England, 
got rid of the most Puritan of the um, factions, and they went to America. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. there they are. Yeah. Uh, with a lot of um, very, uh, how can I put it, do-good kind of mentality, trying to be good people, very upright people, and being very hateful towards those they don't consider to be good or right or moral. So that whole moral majority idea is very much a one-ish thing. And then there's the rugged individualism of America, which is very three-ish. Yes. Doing whatever it takes to achieve. And achievement, making money, recognition, fame, all those things uh, that America, unfortunately, is exporting to the rest of the planet, you know, yeah. as a cultural ideal, is very three-ish. So, Britain strikes me as a blend of one and four. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's that um, kind of uh, the stiff upper lip and the putting on a good show of things and yet suffering underneath, under the surface, which yes. is very four-ish. And the Victorian strain in British culture feels very one-ish to me, similar to the puritanical strain, but not, not quite so much. But it was much more surface here. Yes. Um, appearances mattering rather than what was actually going on. A lot could be going on under the surface that nobody need know about and might be so still to this day. I don't know the culture that well anymore. But um, that's very fourish. Right. Yeah. So I wanted to move on to the. You to talk a little bit more about the two books you've written. Maybe start first of all with the spiritual dimension of the Enneagram and just give us a little bit more insight of what someone could learn from this book about themselves. It's not a basic book about the Enneagram, but it kind of. It's a very deep book and brings in okay. lots of different angles. <laughs> and I like what you said to start with, um, because I'm, I, I still somehow... I, I, I use the Enneagram, I just talked very briefly about this myself. Yeah. My experience of the Enneagram is, it's been so helpful for me. I learnt it in the Rid One School fairly on, early on, the principles. And not only has it helped me to understand myself better and be less hard on myself at times, because I know... It's a basic trait, basic conditioning I have. Right. But it shows me my potential. But also, I found it immensely useful, especially in business. If there's someone I don't get on with, and I have difficulties with, I don't really understand, I, you know, I have a did a little research in the books I've got and try and see if I can work out, from what I know about them, their Enneagram type. Mm -hmm. And if I read about that, understand that, I can put myself in their shoes yes. and start to understand them. It makes my relationship with them far easier yes. because I understand them. Yes. And I know that you take that understanding far deeper and, and it's a way of working, what I would call in my language, working back from the personality towards our ultimate potential. So we don't have so long left, but we have a few minutes. I don't know if you want to just, just briefly talk us through about how that, how that is, is portrayed in your book and what people can learn from your book.